All right, I was trying to give it a minute to get to 101 and to get make sure that the number of attendees have kind of slowed down, which it has. We had a stopping point there on 137 for a while. So I think it's probably a good time to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Dowd. I'm the Deputy Executive Director over Policy Operations and Compliance at the Department of Community Health. And I want to start today by thanking everyone for joining us for today's town hall meeting. I wanna go over some, just some housekeeping things first. Um, if you do have audio issues, if you're seeing yourself with a lot of audio issues, I would uh, really encourage you to make sure if you're on headphones or a plug-in for whatever reason for your audio, that tends to be a lot of the problems. If you get bumped out of the meeting, please try and uh, sign back in. If you could also put your questions and answers in question and answers to everyone, not just to the host, and also don't put them in the chat section. We get a lot of questions in the chat section and then sometimes we lose them. So please try and put your questions in the quest in the Q&A function of the presentation. Uh, one last thing about questions, please try and keep them to the subject we are on today, which is claims processing, um, and make sure you're not giving any real personal information. We don't want to expose anybody for security or PHI issues with today's presentation. Thanks. So the mission of the Department of Community Health, we always go over that first, and it's to provide Georgians with access to affordable quality health care through effective planning, purchasing, and oversight. Today, we're going to do a little status update and timeline on EVV. I'm going to give you some communication resources. Then we're going to get a very, um, a very good overview of the EVV claims portal demo. And then afterwards, depending on how much time we have, we're going to do some Q&A. So I wanna start off with the status updates and timelines. I wanna let everybody know that the EVV implementation is on schedule and we are making great progress. Um, third party EVV vendor outreach and onboarding has begun and that includes with fiscal intermediaries. We had our second fiscal intermediary talk just this morning. We're hammering out as much as we can with those folks. Um, you will be hearing about more training soon um, a lot more training to come, including specific um, intensive trainings in March on how to use the solution. So that's where we want to start with our timeline. In March, that provider training really opens. Now, I feel silly saying that because I don't know how many town halls uh, Joe and I have been on so far, but it's been a lot. And these are all trainings as well. So when we're talking about provider training, we're talking about that training to get ready to um, really use the system. April 1st, 2021, the system will be ready. It will be fully functional, and we will have had that March 2021 initial training. During April, we will continue to provide ongoing support, and we will be utilizing a targeted group of providers as, as almost a focus group to see if there are any issues or cosmetic changes that need to be made. In May, we're going to start a, really start a recruitment campaign and system refinements from our focus group and from anybody who's using the system. So we're going to be doing outreach to get people registered and enrolled and make sure that everybody is using the system. Why we're doing that is because as of July 1st, EVV becomes mandatory for claims processing for community living services and personal support services. Again, July 1st, 2021, EVV becomes mandatory for claims processing for the two services that we have mandated it for per the federal requirements, which is community living services and personal support services. So I, I very briefly wanna go over the communication resources that we've gone over before. I continue to get these questions in the mailbox. The first, is our EVV dedicated website. So you can go on that and all the information, the PowerPoints, the recordings of these town halls, 
flyers, member and provider readiness surveys, frequently asked question, quick reference guides. They are all on there. On the left, there's a schedule of events tab. You can click on the schedule of events tab and you can register for everything we're doing in the upcoming months. It's very easy to use. You just click on little resources by the dates there and sign up for all of our future town halls and trainings. Additionally, and guys, if you, if you don't know this web address, don't worry about it. Just go to whatever search engine you use, Google, whatever, and type in EVVDCH, and it is the first thing that comes up. If you type in EVVGA, I think it's the second or third thing that comes up now, because somebody's been smart and put an ad over that. But if you if you do DCH EVVGA, I know it's the first thing that goes up because that's how I get to the website a lot of times. Also, the email box that I keep talking about is evv.medicaid at dch.ga.gov. If you have any questions that you would like us to respond to, shoot them to that email and we will respond to each individual question in writing. We get a tremendous amount of great questions, suggestions, and comments to that mailbox email site, and we really, really do appreciate it. I think that's it. Okay, so that's that's it for the first part of my section. I'm going to turn it over now to Joe Schnur, who is the Chief Customer Officer for NetSmart slash TELUS. Take it away, Joe. Hey, thank you, Brian. I uh, appreciate that introduction. Um, and hello, everybody. Um, happy Friday to everybody. I hope you had a great week. And uh, Brian said, thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Um, as promised, uh, we are going to give you a really good demo so that you can understand how claims will be submitted through the portal. Um, again, you do have a, a few months to get ready for this. Um, and there will be many, many more trainings, very detailed um, to show you how the entire thing works. But we definitely wanted to give you um, a high level overview today, as I know some of you may you know, be anxious and, and getting ready for EVV. So um, for those of you that were with us in the last two town halls, um, we discussed the two main components of the solution. Um, on the left side of the screen, you can see the mobile application, and that is being used by the caregivers or a, uh, an employee in the uh, participant direct model. And on the right side of the screen, you can see what we call the uh, admin portal, the provider portal, um, people call it kind of different names. That's the portal where billers and schedulers and agency administrators are using to um, schedule and bill and do those types of things. And so what we discussed is there's a couple main functions. One, day in, day out, you're going to be creating visits. And that can be done either on either the portal or the mobile app. And in the previous town halls, we did show how those work. So if you miss those, again, we do highly encourage you to go back and um, view those sessions and they're on the website. Um, next, you complete the visit and that's being done on the mobile application. So today we're gonna be talking about how do you bill and that is done in the administrative portal. Okay, so let me jump over to my other screen. One second. While Joe's doing that, I'm going to break in and answer one question, uh, which is about access to log in for administrator for the TELUS web portal. That's going to all be part of that training and registration that we do in March and April. So we'll be getting you that information soon enough. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. And, and just before I jump into the demo, I did want to demonstrate what Brian said, how easy it is to find the website. 
uh, by searching into Google. Um, and as Brian promised, it is the first one that comes up. When you click to that, it brings you to the Georgia Electronic Visit Verification website. And there is a wealth of information and resources on this page. Um, just in case you want to, uh, you did miss the previous town halls and you want to see where those are located. Again, under the EVV services providers, you can see webinar and webinars and town halls. And you can see here's the first one. Um, here's the second one. Here's the third one. And, and today we are doing the fourth session, um, which you can see the presentation is already loaded to the website. Um, for those of you that are using third parties, there's information on the third parties here as well. Um, so again, very easy to get to, um, and the team is constantly updating these sites. So great resource for you all to have. Okay, so now um, I'm on the portal, and as Brian said, um, don't worry about how do I get credentials and signed in. We are going to handle that um, in depth many times, uh, but very specifically on the upcoming town hall where we will talk about how to register. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss that one uh, where we will go through how does an agency or, or a billing provider, as we call them, uh, registers and gets their first access to the portal. Um, so we will handle that then. So I am I'm acting as an admin uh, for this demo. I am logged into my TELUS um, admin portal. Um, you can see up here, I am logged into the TELUS demo. So this is a demo platform. So it is not Georgia specific or doesn't have, you know, Georgia authorizations. This is all made up information just for demonstration purposes. So if you see something that might not be relevant, um, you understand that this is just a demo. Of course, when you log into your system, um, it will be all specific to your business. Okay, so on the previous town halls, we went through several items in this left menu. So I'll just recap. So in the last town hall, we actually went through the dashboard, which is this main screen which includes also how you can message caregivers through this inbox. We went through how to schedule. We went through how to review historical visits. We went through some reports, how to load all of your users. Um, we went through recipients and how those come over in the feed. Um, and then we discussed the training as well but we will have more specifics on the training component. Um, today, we are going to discuss three tabs that we have not addressed yet, which are the prior authorizations, the work list, and the claims review. These are the three tabs that you will use um, in order to build. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna click on the prior authorizations tab. When it does, it brings me to my authorizations. The first, first thing I want to do is select which payer I'm searching for. This system does allow multiple payers to feed information. Of course, um, for today's purposes, um, we will be only discussing for Georgia, although I don't have Georgia in here. So in demo, I just have Aetna, Florida, um, which is a client of ours. Um, okay, so I hit search. I can search by other criteria if I want to, um, because as you can imagine, you might have a lot of authorizations um, in this window, and you may want to select only a specific recipient or a specific authorization number uh, or so forth. So you can enter that information and hit search, and it will do, it will search by those specifics. I only have a few in here. Um, so you can see the, the four authorizations that I do have. Um, I'll briefly go over these header columns. Um, so first you can see the recipient's first and last name. 
the Medicaid ID, the member ID, the procedure code. Um, what's the effective date? This is important. What's the effective date of that specific authorization? The specific authorization number, if there is a status, maybe there's one that's voided or no longer current, and you would be able to see that status, who the specific payer is for that authorization, if there's any specific programs, how many total units are on this authorization, how many units have already been used, and then the percent remaining. And then what is the limit type on that authorization? Okay, so if I click on any one of these rows, um, and you can see as I hover my mouse across it, it kind of grays it out a little bit. When I click on that, which I just did, it opens it up and it gives me more information. Um, and remember, all this information is fed through a daily feed from DCH. So every day we are getting um, updates and new authorizations. So this is all the information that comes over from DCH. So you can see I don't have all these fields filled in, so it will depend on what comes over in the feed as to what is filled in on your specific authorization. So again, remember when you get access to your system, these authorizations are already going to be loaded. You will not have to load any of your authorizations, which I'm sure for many of you, this is a great benefit. I'm sure today you may be using other systems or just filing paper or multiple different ways. And now you'll have a, an, a centralized system where those authorizations are kept and being updated. Okay, so again, we will go over many more specifics about the authorizations once we get into training, but hopefully that gives you a, a good overview of um, where your authorizations will be located and what information um, you can expect on them. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over to the work list or sometimes referred to as the work queue. Uh, other people also refer to it as um, visit maintenance. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, I'm getting a call here. Um, I'll be right back, Brian. No worries. While we're while um, Joe's got his call, I'm gonna go ahead and answer a few more questions that we have in the mailbox. Um, if a PA has more services than CLS, CLS with it, filter out those services. Yeah, but that that would be true. But for the purposes of EVV, it's important to remember that we are only looking at CLS and PSS, which is CLS in the now and comp waiver. So that would really be the only service that is covered by, um, by the EVV system. The other question we've got is when do you anticipate trainings for the participant direction members? Also, you member a registration period in March to participant directors, members and families need to register for any credentials for the administrative portal. Um, so this is a really good question. What we're doing right now, thank you for that question. It's a great one. Um, what we're doing right now is we're working with the fiscal intermediaries. Our hope is to treat those fiscal intermediaries as third party vendors. And as third party vendors, you really wouldn't have an in interruption in the way you do business now. So you would continue to go through your fiscal intermediary for the EVV services. Um, last question I have in the portal is at initial rollout, will it, oh, but wait a minute, somebody put just something in the chat, so that blocks me, so give me a second. Um, skilled nursing care, the only thing that is required from EVV is personal support services and community living supports. Those are the federally mandated um, services. Joe, you back? I'm back. Okay. <clears throat> sorry about that. Even though I turned off my team, somehow a call came through. So sorry for the. Okay. But, it uh, happens. We get it. 
<laughs> Thanks for answering the questions. Um, okay, so I'm back on my work list. Um, I'm gonna select a payer. Um, and again, you can see that it has the advanced search criteria. So I can search by uh, any specific recipient. And again, it will show you the information that is um, within this tab. So you could just page down and select a specific one. You could begin to type in a name and it will fill it in. So the tool is actually very easy to use. You can even select certain dates that you want to search. So remember what this is, is this is your, your billing work queue. Some people will refer to it as visit maintenance. So this is all the visits that are coming in electronically through EVV. Um, now remember, this is, even if you're using TELUS or a third party, um, we are setting up integrations with all the third party vendors so that their EVV data will feed into this list. So even if you're using a third party for your day-to-day -day EVV, those visits will come over and they'll feed into your work list so that you can then use um, this system to bill. Okay, so again, you can see the headers. I probably don't need to go over them because they're very similar to the last page that we showed. Um, we try to keep it pretty close to the same so you can get pr very proficient on using it. The one column that I will call out is this column right here in the middle called status. So this is, what is the, the status of this specific visit in my work queue? And you can see rejected. That is actually um, a, a claim that was previously submitted that got rejected for one reason or another. You can see unmatched. Unmatched means a visit that came over, it ran through the business rules that we've set up, and it did not match the business rules. Um, this is very key because the goal of this tool is to flag for you any issues that we find so that you don't um, get rejected. Um, in an ideal world, we want to reduce or even eliminate rejection. So we continue to build out um, business rules to help you as the provider from making mistakes. However, some mistakes are still going to be made. We, we understand that probably more in the beginning than after you get used to it. Um, and so during training, we will go through for you all the reasons that it unmatches and how to solve for an unmatched. Eventually, you will solve for all those, and you will see right here in this visit, this one is matched. And once it is matched, that means it is ready to be billed. And then you can easily just check that box, come up to the top, and hit release. And you can see that the selected match visit is being submitted for processing. And so that is easy it is to bill. So the key is getting all the visits to match, and then with a click of a button, you release that for billing. So very easy to use. So let me pull up an unmatched. Um, and again, just like the other screen, you can see as I move my mouse on the screen, it highlights each row. Um, and if I click on any one um, line, it's going to expand that. If I click on it again, it will unexpand it. Um, so you can see there is a wealth of information when I expand um, this visit. Um, now, where's all this information coming from? It's coming, some of it's coming from the feeds that we get. Um, we know that this visit was for Dixie Hyde and we got Dixie Hyde in a feed from DCH, which is under the recipient. So we pull that information into this visit that's getting ready to be exported as a claim. Um, and so you can see all that information here. Um, you can see these little pencils. Uh, and you will notice that not every item here has a pencil. So if it has a pencil, that is, that is a field that 
can be editable, meaning you can edit the field. Now we are working with DCH to define which fields can be uh, changed for DCH. So just because you might see a pencil here, doesn't mean that when you use your system that you'll have a pencil for that field. But you can see that there are some that have pencils and some do not. So let's go through a common use case. A common use case would be um, my caregiver shows up and they forget to clock in. They're new to EVV, even though they have their mobile app um, and they know how to use it, they just forget. And then they're there for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then they remember, oh, I have to sign into my mobile app. And they do, they sign in, but now they are 15 minutes late. And they, of course, want to get credit for the entire visit. Um, so you will see on here, there's a scheduled time, which in this case is 1015. There's an actual time, which again, in this demo is 1115. But let's say um, the caregiver actually showed up at 11. Um, but again, they forgot the clock in. So then they will call their administrator and say, I forgot the clock in, I showed up at 11 o'clock. Um, can you please update my visit to reflect that time? Now, another suggestion that we would have in that scenario is that on the mobile app, they can enter a note. And it's great if they enter a note and say, I forgot the clock in, I, I really showed up at this visit at 11 a.m., then that way that is recorded in the history for that recipient, and if you ever need it, that information is there. So let's show you how you would fix this scenario. So you can see my pencil for billable start date and time. So if I click on that pencil, it opens up a box, and it allows me to select my date and time from the calendar, um, and the actual time, which in this case we said was 11. 11.03, I don't know why it won't let me do 11. Um, and then you would enter the reason code. Um, so billing date and time increased in this case, because you actually increase the amount of time. And then you might say, uh, caregiver forgot to lock in upon arrival, made note in recipient profile. So that's good for you to have that note in case um, there's ever an audit or anything for this that you have that information in that note. Um, because, you know, months later, you will likely forget why you changed that. So, and then uh, when I fill everything else in, um, which I'm not going to do for, for this, but when I fill all this information in, then my apply button will illuminate and, and I can hit apply. So that's as simple as it is to uh, update the billable start and end time. Um, so again, I won't go through all these fields because we're limited on time today, but in training, um, you will learn every field in here and what they all mean. Now, down the bottom, um, this is the last thing I want to show you on this screen, is that, remember, this was an unmatched visit, which means that it tripped against some of the business rules. So when you page down to the bottom, it will tell you exactly um, the errors that it bumped up against. It will also track any edits that you make. So every pencil that you use to change, it's going to note that edit down here. Um, so you can see, here's an example. Um, uh, the visit had a missing starter and verification. Um, so that means that um, they did not maybe use GPS um, for this visit. And this was maybe manually entered. So it's going to trip an error and it's going to want to know why was this manually entered. So if I click on this little circle with an explanation point in, in the middle, 
um, it's going to again open up the edit and error box and it's going to ask me why did this happen i enter a reason code so let's say that the attendant failed to um, call in um, or call out and again i can make my note here and then i can hit apply and then it will it will fix this error um, and it will make uh, a note so that's as simple as it is to fix the the errors and again we do document all and every edit made so that we have an audit log um, so that when and if needed, we can always go back and look at who made these changes, when and what the notes were that that uh, were entered. And that's to protect all of us. OK, so that's how you are going to manage your work queue um, in order to prepare that visit, turn it into a claim and then um, release that claim. Again, if, if all of these were matched, you've done your job, you've got everything cleaned up, you can even highlight the entire uh, box and hit release, and it will re release all those claims. So I think what you will find is in the beginning, when you're getting used to it, um, you're gonna bump up to more errors, but as you become masters of EVV, which I can assure you, you will, um, you, most of your visits will um, be matched and billing will be very, very easy. Um, so, but again, if you ever do make a mistake um, or are missing some information, the whole goal of the tool is to alert you of that um, so that you can bill effectively and uh, be paid quickly. So, what happens after I release a visit and I want to know the status of that claim? Maybe I submitted a whole bunch of claims a few days ago and I want to know, have those claims been paid? Okay, after they leave the work list, um, now they go over into claims review. So I'm going to click on the claims review tab. And once again, you can see the search criteria, um, very consistent. I, again, I select my payer. Um, I hit my search bar and I can see all the claims that I have submitted um, for that respective payer. Again, very similar in the header rows. And again, here is that status. And again, you'll be able to see a variety of statuses from submitted, which means my claim was submitted, to accepted which means it was accepted by DCH. Um, I don't have any paid in here because again, this is a demo, um, but um, ideally you're gonna have a bunch of paid. Um, it's possible you could have paid partial um, and you may have um, some rejected. You may even have some denied, in which case we will list the reasons why it got denied so that you can um, if appropriate, rework that claim. Um, so again, just like the other ones, if I click on any one of these lines, it will give me all the details. You will notice that the pencils are all gone. That's because this is a submitted claim and I cannot make changes to a submitted claim. However, you will notice that the edits are here listed so that if anybody did make any changes, um, that all of those are noted here on this claim. Um, and again, I can go up and search by a certain um, status. So you may want to, for example, and I don't have any, I don't have any paid, so, uh, but if I say I uh, had paid, I'll just use accepted for now, and I do a search, it found all of my accepted. Let's say this was all my paid. I could select all this and export this and it will export it into a, uh, a spreadsheet. I know that some of you may want to export the data into a sheet. You may upload it into a different system. Um, so that capability will be available to you. So uh, hopefully that gives everybody a, a good overview of how 
you will find your authorizations, how you will work in your work queue, and, and do visit maintenance and release those um, claims, and then how you can review those claims in the claims review. All right, let me go back to the PowerPoint. All right, we have a few more updates to share, and then I think we'll open it up and finish those, those questions and answers. So, many of you um, are using third party EV vendor, EVV vendors. This is a list of all the vendors that we are aware of. So, if you are using a third party system and you do not see your vendor listed here, it's very important that you ask your vendor to contact us via this, integrate, this integrations at fortellus.com email. Um, and again, this is on the website. Um, of course, you can go back and look at this presentation, but there are multiple ways that you can get this email. But again, please, if you do not see your vendor, please ask them to reach out to us. It is urgent that we get in contact with them soon as the integration work has begun. Now, you also notice that there are two different colors. Some are listed in blue and some are in black. What that means is the ones that are in blue um, have already contracted with us. So step one for the vendors is to complete some paperwork with us. Um, and the ones in blue have already completed that process. The ones in black have not. So if you see your vendor and they're in black, maybe you could give them a nudge to complete their step and get started with the integration. Um, we did make this slide a couple days ago, so it is possible that um, some vendors have completed the paperwork since then. Um, so as you can see, this is a fairly large list. It is just short of 40 different vendors. So we have a lot of work to do to get all of these integrations done in time. Uh, as Brian had pointed out, we are um, certainly approaching um, our launch. Um, so again, if you do have your vendor on here, uh, make sure that they are getting through the process uh, in a timely manner. Um, the good news is many of these vendors we have worked with in other states, um, and we do have existing relationships with a lot of them. Um, not all of them, but, but many of them on here. Okay, so that was my update for the third parties. If you have any questions, please do enter those. And then, um, Brian, I believe I'll turn things back over to you for, I believe this will be our last PowerPoint slide. Thanks, Joe, and thanks for the really good overview of the claims administrative portal. So, uh, as promised, we have a lot of upcoming town halls. Um, the next one that is in the beginning of March is going to be on training preparation for getting to use that system. So, kind of the in depth, um, not the in depth, but the uh, overview of the training preparation. Then it's most likely we're going to we're going to switch these April and May um, trainings. We're going to do a registration training in April so we can try and get as many people on board as quickly as possible for that May recruitment campaign. And then May, June, July, and August, we are going to leave those open for what you guys need, your topics and your feedback and whatever would be most useful for providers and members to have um, as we move forward with the EVV implementation between um, March and July. I think that brings us to our Q&A. And before I do a little bit of Q&A as time permits, I want to, and Joe will certainly help me out with this, I want to go ahead and once again remind you of that EVV mailbox. If you have questions, you can send them to the EVV mailbox. If you're like me and you think of questions at a later time, or you just have something very personal that you need to send, or you have something that you want in writing back, 
um, then you can send it there and you will get a written response from the department associated with your question. OK, so let's go through um, as many questions as possible as we can here. Um, I'm just going straight back to the Q&A. Uh, the first question is, can system be can the system be this system be used for EDWP structured family caregivers? So that's the elderly and disabled waiver program, and it's a different service called structured family caregiving. The EVV system, as the state of Georgia is paying for it now, can only be used for PSS and CLS. It is not used for any other service. That is the mandate that we are under under the federal government, and that's the only two services that we're using it for. We will be using it for home health in 2023. Now there are, and I've said this on other trainings, there are many states that once they get EVV up, they choose to use it for other services. I know there's a talking to a state a couple of days ago that decided to use it for their non-emergency transportation. But as of right now, it is just for CLS and PSS. I have another question that says families are stating, participant directed families are stating they no longer have to keep case notes or documentation. That is not true. Again, as I said earlier today, um, we hope to integrate the participant direction fiscal intermediaries as third party vendors. So it is very likely that the, the documentation standards will remain exactly as they are now with your third party vendor. Work less, fee to visits. Um, is, is that real time? Meaning once a caregiver submits, um, does it move over to the administrative portal? And how quickly does that move over? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if Joe wants to answer that one. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I would say that as long as the caregiver is has internet connection, then it is very much near real time uh, within seconds that the data, as soon as they end the visit, it is available on the portal. Now, there are scenarios where they may not have internet connection. And in those cases, it will stay in a pending status on the device until they achieve internet connection, at which time it will be pulled off the phone automatically and will show up on the visit uh, screen and on the work list. Thank you. The next question is, will we still be able to bill through GAMIS? And that answer to that question is no. As a 7-1, CLS and PSS will have to go through the EVV system in order to be paid. Um, the next question is, when you change the time, does the units update as well? Yes. So the units are updated associated with the time in and time out. Um, there's a, a comment, and I'll be happy if anybody wants to discuss the system and usability, you're welcome to send a, a comment or concern or request for time to discuss with myself and others at DCH, and we'll be happy to discuss your concerns via the, the EVV mailbox that is open on the screen right now. For third party EVV, till the polls occur to pull the data into the TELUS work list. I'm going to need your help on that one. Go. They're asking about the process to get the data from their third party over to TELUS. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'll have to say it depends on the third party. I know everybody's system operates a little bit differently. Um, so I can't give you one answer. I know some um, will batch them up and send them out automatically. Others may require you to go in and select visits and hit some type of send button. So it really um, will depend. And I, I ask that you all connect with your vendor to be sure you are very clear on how that process works. And then the other thing I will add to that, very important, is in the scenario where you send over information um, that winds up getting rejected from TELUS, um, you need to understand from your third party, how do you get visibility to that rejected notice? 
so that you can make those updates and resend over that visit. Because we have scenarios, people call us all the time, hey, I sent this over, where is it? And what happened is it got rejected and the provider doesn't have the ability to do that rejection. And uh, you really need to. So that's a very important part for you to make sure you understand how that works from your third party vendor. Thank you. Next question is, how will the 835 electronic remittance pipe uh, remittance advice post back into TELUS when, when it will include all services billed for the agency, not for CLS. Um, so your remittance advice doesn't it change. And how EVV is functioning with MMIS is through a file transfer. So we got that worked out. Um, but you, what you need to know is that your 835 will be out there for claims as it always is. So you can go into MMIS and check your CLS services and other services, just like you always have been able to. That actually answers a couple of questions in a row. Um, uh, this is just really a general question. What does Conduit do? Is tell us the software pro provider and aggregator? The answer to the second question is yes, the TELUS is the software provider and aggregator. They're actually NetSmart, and I, I'm going to do my best to try and um, introduce that new um, company name as much as possible. Um, Conduit is our direct contractor for this um, EVV program, so they do a lot of project management. They do a lot of the work with DCH and the state government on compliance for the program. Um, is there a chance of accidentally releasing a claim? That's one of the good parts that I've learned about this system. Um, uh, this question is about match claims. Um, so the EVV system really looks for the claims to be matched. And then when everything is matched, they get sent over to MMIS. So they don't get sent over once until all those matches are done. And uh, being in Medicaid now for as long as I've been in, there is a tremendous amount of claims that come across to MMIS that are rejected and have to be done two, three. I've seen claims reset 20, 30 times before they got paid and all for things that were really in the EVV system, what would be matching errors? So, so the answer to that is no, that you have to have all your matching done before it gets sent on over. Um, so again, when it becomes to participant direct, we are, we, it is our focus to continue the services as they are now. Um, so the email, if you, if you did not see your third party vendor, that is available on our website. It's integrations at fortellus.com, but please go to our website where, where Joe went to earlier. You can just do DCH. EVV, GA, it'll be the first thing that comes up and then you click on that provider tab and scroll down and it'll have all the information for your third party vendor that's on there. So just go to that website and I promise you it's really easy to see um, that information about getting in contact with TELUS. Um, the next question is, is specifically if you use TELUS for your non-Medicaid providers, yeah, I'll pass this question on to um, TELUS and they can respond to you. I'll, we got a lot of questions. I really want to keep them um, for the Medicaid services at this point. Um, pardon me if this question has been answered. That's OK. I answer questions multiple times all the time. Um, it's not a big deal at all. Um, you'll be reimbursed the same way you are now. So the same MMIS functionality and timing, and yes, your remittance advices will still be available for you. So TELUS is packaging up, doing that check for EVV, and then they're sending it over to MMIS, but MMIS is processing the claims like they always have and giving you the remittance advice on those claims. Do you need to train your home health aides? Well, if it's for home health, that goes into place in 2023. But if you are talking about EVV for personal support services and community living support, then absolutely um, that is something that we are we are working on right now. 
Um, and that is part of the training that you will need to have them train for before July, really as soon as possible that we're going to start for in March. Next question is acumen is shown in black, not blue. Yes, we already have a relationship with acumen. Thank you for checking on us on that one. We did meet with them just this morning. And yes, they have worked with DCI in another state. Um, well, the next question is, will the process be different for providers using a separate software? Yes, um, so the system is different for if you have a third party vendor, then what you've done is you've contracted your own EVV system that is going to talk to our EVV system. So you need to be in contact with your EVV system to ask them those questions that Joe was just talking about earlier, which is, you know, what is the differential of those? What 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 is this looking like? Where am I going to how are you doing with the integration and how does this impact our current workflow? Um, so the next question is about documentation for CLS. We're working with now and comp right now on that, and that will be included as part of the training package. Thank you for your comment. Uh, yes, that is true. There's a question that is for 720, I've said 7121 that claims will go through TELUS. Um, does that mean that the bill, the date or the, the date of service? So that means as of 7-1-21, we are going to shut off um, the functionality to bill claims as of 7-1 forward, unless they are matched completely with EVV. So that is dates of service 7-1 forward. Yes, PAs will automatically go into the system and that does happen daily. Um, yes, uh, again, you will need to train your PSS aides on this system. You will get paid in the same schedule again. So the, the MMS, MMIS claim system is going to pay the way it always has and you will get paid in the same manner you are now. I'm just going through and seeing if there's any other, because we're almost out of time here, any other really pressing question. We got quite a quite a few more that, that a lot of um a lot of duplicative questions. So uh, there and there's a, there's quite a few questions that are honestly not within scope of this. There are questions about the um the how the waiver itself is delivered some caps that are available in the waiver you're welcome to send those to the evv mailbox or to my personal email box which is bdowd at dch.ga.gov and i'll give you a real clear answer on your question so if you want to email me directly again it's my first initial and my last name b d o w d at dch.ga dot gov and those go to me directly do not don't send me the evv questions though i mean i still answer the evv questions go ahead and send those to the evv mailbox but if you have a question that's larger about how the waivers operate or caps in the waiver or concerns about different points of the waiver that's really not in scope for the presentation so why don't you go ahead and just send them to me I will coordinate with our waiver specialists and our experts, um, whether it be a DBHDD or in-house at DCH, in order to get those questions answered. Okay, I think um, we've gone through most of the questions that weren't duplicative at this point. Again, if you have um, pot, if it is possible, if you have questions, additional questions, go ahead and send them to evv.medicaid at dch.ga.gov and we will be happy to provide you a written answer to any of your questions, okay? And um, thank you very much for your time today. We really, really, really do appreciate your participation. I know Joe does too. I'm gonna to give him a second to thank you before we sign off. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Um, and I hope everybody has a great weekend.
And I share that sentiment. I hope you have a great weekend, everybody. Have a good day.